Well, hi everybody, it's Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and it is thrift haul time. Let's see what we've got. Well, fast asleep right here is Sleepy Baby, and you know, I'm actually going to make you wait. <laughs> anyway, he was a very inexpensive toy made in Japan. Really nice original box, a little alley right there, but... And what, he was a dollar? A dollar so you wind him up and he does something really creepy but um, I'm gonna show you that like at the end of that you're gonna have to stay tuned there's gonna be a a tag at the end and you'll see what creepy baby does uh, actually he's not that creepy uh, here's some Christmas dishes my Christmas dishes that I purchased in, uh, last month sold really well so I'm not over the top about this pattern but I thought I would give it a try two plates and two uh, chowders Staffordshire engravings Yuletide. These, um, I did look these up and I think maybe, maybe 25 bucks for the whole, it was like 50 cents per item, so I get like maybe 25 bucks for the, all of this, the two plates and the, the two, uh, the two chowders. Or I, I guess depending on where you live, you, some people call these soup bowls. Um, I grew up calling them chowder bowls. Back here, you remember I showed you this a little while ago, Homer Loughlin made this and it's the pattern is called uh, Colonial Kitchen. This I picked up a few weeks ago but then I was out thrifting and I also just recently found uh, the plate. So it was a really beautiful plate in excellent condition to match it. This was a popular pattern in the 1940s. Not great value but I'll put the cup, the saucer, and the plate together and sell that as a replacement lot. I can't remember who made these. They have a hazel atlas look to them, and I didn't bother really to, to look them up. I wasn't uh, in the mood to do a lot of research. These are two little, probably from the 1950s, um, milk glass containers with uh, little tiny lids. They're not marked on the bottom, so uh, I'm not sure, but they just had that hazel atlas look to me. Um, and th these are in great shape, no chips or cracks, they're really cute. And they were um, also 50 cents each, so we'll see if we can get 10 or 15 bucks out of them. In the front is um, Mary, a religious piece here, uh, probably, well this is chalkware, and this probably dates to the, to the 1940s. This would have come, these almost always came in pairs, and there would normally be Jesus on the other one, um, but I couldn't find that or it might have gotten broken. And um, the original felt is on the back. This is where you hang it up. These, you, you see these a lot in uh, blue, blue mirrored glass, not as much in what's called either peach glass or rose colored glass, or sometimes it's called copper glass. And it's that 1940s deco mirrored glass. It was a very popular thing to do with uh, with these these religious items um, 
and so just marry on her own. I'm still going to be able to sell her. I just am not exactly sure. Probably for $15 or so. I don't know who made this. It's unmarked on the bottom. It's a hand painted, <coughs> excuse me, hand painted porcelain vase. Uh, it's pretty, and if you look really close to it, you'll see it's signed over here, Jacob. See that? J A C O B. So that's probably who painted it. But there's no mark on the bottom, and uh, this could be European. Uh, who knows? Speaking of Europe, well, no, um, we'll say that for another time. This is in really great shape. Uh, and that's the reason why I picked it up. I don't do a lot with porcelain. Here's one from Austria. This is marked on the bottom, and I forget it's an Austrian maker. You guys can look it up if you're interested. Uh, I, I just, right now, I, I don't remember. I'm sorry I didn't write all this down. This has a luster to it. Or an iridescent, iridescence as well. It's really beautifully painted. Very dainty, and there are no chips on, the, no chips or cracks on this. Just a two-handled bowl. I don't believe it ever had a lid because there, uh, you just wouldn't be able to... The way this is ruffled, and this is ruffled on the inside, and there's no wear here. I honestly don't think this ever had a lid. Uh, so I think that's just the way that it came. And it was probably part of a much larger dinner set. We know that 100 years ago they had a dish for everything. Today we stand and we eat over our kitchen sinks. This may fool you. You may look at that and say, wow, what a really neat piece of colonial era blown glass. There's the pontal mark on the bottom where it was uh, broken off of the rod or the tool that was used. There's a lot of wear on the bottom of it. You can see the handle was applied. It's all blown. It is blown glass. It's all handmade glass. But, and it's a big but. That guy right there, I don't think, I think this is a, a modern piece. I think it was probably made in the 1990s. And I'm actually going to do, and I promise you I am, I'm going to do a little special on how you can really tell old, old, and it's tough, really tough. But this is, this is, I don't think is old. I'll back up for just a minute because there is something on this counter that dates to roughly 1790 to 1830. Uh-uh. Yaha. -uh. Can you spot it? The stapler. No. No, truly there really is. And I'll show you that in a second. But this was only a dollar. And um, anyway, so I'll talk about that some other time. About when I when I talk about the, the glass. I'm skipping all over the place. This back here I picked up. I love this. I paid $5 for it. Let me back off of it. It's hard to do this. Um, obviously, it's a New England scene. It's... I don't know if it looks as well in this video as the piece actually does. Uh, it is an original piece of art. It is signed. I will show you the back of it. So I, I could look up Marilla illustration board to maybe try to date this if I can. Um, not really concerned with that. Uh, I spent a lot of time in New England. I have a lot of family history up there. And, uh, that, and this reminds me, I, I just love it. I like the sort of overcast cloudiness of a, of a sort of New England day with a, maybe a storm coming in and um, the colors the muted colors it really reminded me when I saw it of the kind of paintings that were done uh, in the sort of the WPA era I'm not suggesting this is a WPA artist it's not and I don't even think it's from the 30s um, in fact I'm certain that it's not but it has that feel and that's what I really like about it so I'm gonna be framing it and keeping that I paid five dollars for it and uh, I love it. That's a photograph back there also that I purchased, uh, which I'm not gonna keep, I'm gonna sell it. You know, I do do some old photography, uh, or dabble in it rather. I just love this. It's from the 30s. The family has just sort of, sort of stepped out. There's snow on the ground. 
could be Easter Sunday. No, I take that back. I don't think it's Easter Sunday. Uh, but, you know, they had a snapshot taken. The photograph was colorized. It probably dates to the early to the mid years of the Great Depression. It's in an original frame. There's no writing on the back of it, but uh, I love it. And I hope somebody else will fall in love with it because I'm going to sell it. This I'm not really sure about. I know it's a piece of barware. Uh, it's missing. It would have had, and I'll show you. I've got back here. I'm reaching back. These are, this is, this is a small cocktail shaker. This is from a large and aluminum uh, lid from another cocktail shaker. But to show you that I know that it's missing, here's one that's stainless steel. Would have had something like this on the top that would have fit inside of it. Uh, it doesn't have a lid and I'm not sure how old it is. It's very heavy. It's got uh, a really nice ground glass bottom there. You can see there's wear on it. This doesn't come off. Here's the strainer where you you would then uh, pour, be able to pour the liquid out. The liquid would come out there and the ice would stay in. Um, I don't I'm not sure about this. It has a, it has a feel to me of the 19 of uh, the Depression era, but uh, I could be fooled by it, and uh, I probably shouldn't have gotten it without its lid because I don't know that I'll ever find one. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with that. Back there is a set of eight little cordials, little. Um, elegant depression glass and I am not doing well today because you know I haven't even looked this up to tell you uh, but it's just a matter of getting out my elegant depression glass book and looking up that pattern I'm sure it's in there I'm trying to get it where you can see there you go Isn't that pretty you can always spot elegant depression glass uh, it's it's comes in lots of colors but it has be this beautiful etching on it. And this is probably Cambridge, Falstoria, one of those companies made it. There are no chips on any of them. Um, and you know, you always hear me say depression glass is not doing what it used to do, but I had to get those, they were cheap, and we'll see if we can get 30 bucks for them. I don't know who this guy is. I think it's nautical. It is from Norway. Edgar Sund is a, either a town or a city in, uh, in Norway. I did look that up very quickly. But I don't know who he is. I'm assuming he, I see like Viking, a sort of a Viking uh, motif around the edge here, which is cool. So, all right, all my friends in Norway, who is he? He's probably famous in your country. There's, I'm surprised that there's nothing on here. Is he some famous sea captain that I should know about? Here's a piece of chalkware, which I'm guessing is from the 50s or the 60s. Um, in excellent shape for your kitchen. Really good shape. I love that. Here are some more toys. These have the wooden handles on them. like that one. That's okay. Uh, with clowns and whatnot, these are with the wooden handles. They're probably slightly older than the uh, ones with the plastic handles. Here is, do you remember I had a whole, I had like 32 pieces of this barware. I sold a lot of it. I still have some of it left, but now I go out and I find the ice bucket. This is Culver, and, I, and it's called Starlight, and I have one of the other glasses to show you. Now, the pattern is not exactly the same, you can see, uh, but it's close enough for jazz. And I expect once people get a cocktail, two cocktails going, they wouldn't notice the, the difference. But uh, So the, I still have the big tumblers. I sold the little Tom Collins, or the little uh, On the Rocks glasses. Uh, and something else, I don't remember what, but now I have an ice bucket. All right, I'm going, am I getting everything? Here we go. A first day cover, I paid a dollar for this. Um, it's 1939, it's the first day of the 1939 New York World's Fair. And I like that because I love Art Deco. And it was sent to somebody here in Philly. Just really cool. I like it. 
You know what that thing is? That was like well, the most exciting thing I found because I love antique lighting and this is really awesome and it's worth some money. This is a light bulb cover and it's an original. They do make reproductions. You can see on this one, there's the original uh, clamp on the back. There's the, I'm trying to get, okay, where you can see it. There's the hook and the eye, I guess, or the clamp on the back, see? So you would lower this over top of the light bulb and then hook it in the back like that. These are all glass beads. And this was a popular way to cover up uh, uh, an exposed light bulb on a uh, light fixture. And I'm actually gonna show you that in action at the very end of the video. I'm gonna put this on an antique light fixture and let you see what it looks like all lit up. I paid a dollar for that guy. Um, and he's worth at least 30 really cool I don't know anything about these it looks like clam broth glass which I do know a lot about and I collect Fenton uh, clam broth green but I don't know if these are old or not they're lamp, hurricane lamp shades with uh, a little uh, snap not snap on but that slides onto the bottom of the glass and then that slides down over the light fixture there are no chips on either of these. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna use them yet, but I was excited to find them. Right here in the front are two swing line staplers from the 1960s, real cool 1960s Mad Men era look. They both work, they were a dollar each. And these are, you know, I mean, everybody my age remembers those. Back here, do you know what this is? I knew what this was because I saw it about six or seven years ago on <clears throat> not antiques roadshow but one of those flea market shows and i remembered it it is signed on the back which is let's see it's signed right here it is an original goodwill no just kidding where's the signature right there right there see that it's a c and an s and it's that you can barely, you can just see the word bronze, CS, and Carl Sorensen. Now that's who made it. He did a lot of work in bronze. Most of his stuff has this bare degree sort of hammered finish to it. He worked here in Philadelphia in the arts and uh, making arts and crafts style things in the 1920s and 30s. He later went on and worked for Tiffany. Um, just really a beautiful plate there's some wear in the center of it as you can see but I should be able to get about 40 bucks for that and that I paid $3.99 was really excited to find that at the at the Goodwill store back there is a five light plastic candelier no big deal you can see it hiding there in the box but uh, I do love the box really like my vintage Christmas box there's a 1936, 37, 38 GE General Electric Art Deco fan. Uh, and it is uh, about an $80 fan. It does work beautifully. I had it plugged in. I will run it for you at the end of the video and let you see how it works. Uh, there's a lot of those fans around from the 1920s. You start to see fewer of them in the 30s because, well, we all know why. You didn't have money to buy a new fan. You held on to your, your brass fan from the 20s. This is just a really cool fan. So I was happy to get that for, uh, I think I paid 15 for it. Here are three kitchen uh, jars or pots. B uh, pottery, th this is the only one that has the lid. I'm even surprised that the, that the lid is left on that. And they are globe globe oven proof uh, 1940s I know I know people love to decorate their kitchens with things like this there aren't any chips and cracks on them I wish that we had three lids but we'll take what we can get that you saw in my last video the old curiosity shop I was happy to find that for I think I paid two dollars for that a trinket box or a cigarette box yeah one of my subscribers reminded me and I don't know why I had, I had that thought escaped me but it could also could have also been used as a cigarette box um, and uh, there's the menacing dwarf 
how do you pronounce that? Q U I L P. Kilp? I don't know, but that's the character. And now, thanks to Nancy, I have the book and I'll be reading it. Back there is a 78 of Virgil Fox. You probably don't want me to go into detail about that. I will bore you. He was, and now I'm doing it, he was one of the greatest organists of the last century and people, uh, anything Virgil Fox is highly collected. Uh, this picture frame is awesome and I should get about uh, maybe 35 to 40 dollars for it, we'll see, maybe 35. This I might auction instead of doing a buy it now because it's in such great shape and I'm, I'm trying to yeah, and I just I kind of want to see what I can what how high it would go. Uh, it's a reverse painted glass frame. You want to make sure on these frames that you don't have any chips around the edges and that the reverse paint is good. Extremely Art Deco, screaming 1930s, and uh, the back of it is also in super condition. So I did pay ten dollars for this, knowing that I could easily get. 30. So I'm going to move that out of the way and wrap this video up after I show you this cool 1960s ice bucket. It's unmarked. I don't know who made it, but it is nifty nifty. Don't you think? The ice bucket does come out of there. I won't take it out. Um, I paid five dollars for that and I picked up a you know I collect records. Here is a uh, 78 RPM. This is the Skeleton Jangle by the original Dixieland Jazz Band. This was probably recorded somewhere around 19... They started recording in 1917 with the very first jazz records recorded for Victor. Uh, and then this probably came out somewhere in 1918 or 1919. But I thought Skeleton Jangle would be good for halloween -y, which is coming up, right? Oh, I forgot. Now, some of you are going to get mad at me, and you're just going to have to get over it. Let me move some things. Why am I shouting at you? I shouldn't do that. There is that awful lid that was on that, that barbed wire Pyrex. And look, I put it on a... I, yes, I found a divided blue casserole. I'm not going to pick it up. We all know our Pyrex. Uh, that's a more desirable piece of Pyrex. The bait, the bottom, is in beautiful condition. And so is the lid. So um, I'm going to be selling this together like that. That's the piece right there that dates to the 1790s to the uh, 1830s. It's a piece of flint glass with a, with a glitter on it. I don't know where that glitter came from. And this is a hand-blown, totally handmade uh, wine stem or cordial. The, this is referred to as the bowl. The bowl is applied here to the stem. This is a button stem. And then the we can see the pontil on the bottom, which is rough. That's the mark right there where the piece is broken off of the mold. Oh, I'm sorry, off of the rod. And, <clears throat> excuse me, one way to tell flint glass is its weight because um, when you look at this, it's going to weigh a lot more than you think it is. When we look at this piece of glass over here, uh, so roughly 1810, 1930, big difference. This is extremely lightweight, and this is much heavier. This also has flint in it, a certain amount of flint, which this one doesn't. And so I can't really do this. Uh, well, I'll try it. Listen to what this sounds like when we gently ping it or ding it. Okay, you hear that? Now I know it's etched. That has something to do with it. Now, listen to, well, hold on. <laughs> listen to this. You can even hear it just when I, do you hear that? Just when I set it down on the counter, but listen now. You hear that beautiful bell-like tone and I was turning the camera sideways so that it would really pick it up. That's one way to tell flint glass. 
Now, I just quickly wanted to give you like a 10 second thing about uh, flint glass. I promise you I'm gonna do, cause I, ha I collect this, and I now have probably 30 pieces of early American flint glass. So a lot of this early American blown glass can still be found here in the Northeast. So I'd like to sh highlight my collection of flint glass in another video at some other time, but I just wanted to show you that. All right, stay tuned because I'm gonna show you the fan in action, the light bulb cover in action, and maybe we'll crank up Sleepy Baby and see what he does. So don't turn off yet, but I will sign off and say, this is Scott from the old Curiosity Shop, and I always forget to say it. I almost always forget to say it, but if you enjoy the videos and you like what you see, please uh, hit the subscribe button and the like button and leave me a comment. I enjoy uh, learning from you and writing back to you and uh, getting to know more people and what you collect and all that kind of stuff. So signing off, it's Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now.